Awesome. All right. Motivation. We've been talking about motivation for the last few, whatever, right, for a long time, because that seems to be the really big thing is trying to get our kids motivated to want to learn or to want to read or to do the hard things, right? And sometimes that's really, that's one of those life learning things that we do in growing up. It's like there's something in front of you and it's hard and it's difficult. What motivates you to want to do that hard thing, right? And how do we as parents help our kids to become motivated to jump that hard hurdle, right? Exactly. So I am Jean Harville. I'm the founder of Raising Motivated Learners, and I'm the creator of the Rethink Learning Academy. And so we're going to learn a little bit more about that like next month. So we're motivated to do those things that we enjoy, right? That brings us enjoyment. And, you know, it hits that pleasure part of our brain that gives us that dopamine hit, which is so, which is the reason why <clears throat> so many of us are on our phones and so many of us like to do gaming and especially our kids because it gives them that dopamine hit. They don't have to think about anything else. They just get that pleasure center of the brain is being fed. That's what that all is. That's what that whole thing is about. And so, you know, we um, we get motivated to to eat. Right. Our, what happens is our unconscious brain or subconscious brain is what is um making our decision. We get our decisions like 90, 90% of our decisions come from our, our, um, our subconscious brain. Our subconscious brain tells us when it's time to eat, when you're hungry, right? It notices and recognizes some of the sensations in the body and the, and the subconscious brain says, Gene, it's time to eat. And so you go and you eat. And you don't need a lot of motivation because what's happening is what's hardwired into your subconscious brain is when your body feels like it needs to eat, then you go and eat. It's just automatic, right? And so things like habits, we have some, some specific bedtime habits that we have, waking up in the morning habits, and we just do them mindlessly without even thinking about them. We just go through the steps, so go through the steps of brushing your teeth. Do you think about every tooth that you're brushing and, and how you move that toothbrush in and out of your mouth? No, you just brush your teeth, right? And so all of that is hardwired into the subconscious brain. And so it's automatic, just like that. We don't have to be motivated to Maybe we have to be motivated to remember to brush our teeth, but even then we are, you know, our tongue starts rolling around like, I think I need to go brush my teeth. <laughs> and so that's, you know, that's an indication for us. So things that are not motivated are things that might be bring us pain. Um, I don't know, like learning to do something that could cause pain, like learning to skate. <laughs> and you know that if you fall, like, ow, that's going to hurt. So how do you motivate yourself to want to go skating besides the fact that you want to skate like all the rest of your buddies? Possibly that might be a motivation. But the first time you fall, you're like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore because your subconscious brain is hardwiring. And you might fall and you might feel that pain that you felt last time you, you tried to skate. So you don't want to do that. Right. Or like um, like, for instance, <clears throat> reading, right? And so let's say, for instance, you had didn't have a really good experience, maybe when you were growing up in school, um, and when you were learning to read, uh, you kind of got laughed at a little bit, and or you answered a question incorrectly, even though all the other kids probably have incorrectly answered questions, but because you, you know, you're putting yourself like, I have to answer this question correctly, or else all my people, all my friends are going to think poorly of me. So that whole thought process is being wired in your brain. And it doesn't happen just one time. It can happen over and over and over again. And what happens is your brain says, oh, don't worry, Jean, you don't have to worry about that because, you know, I'm going to keep you safe. And so when it comes to like, maybe, you know, this happened maybe when you were little and you were learning to read and maybe that you were asked questions and you didn't know the answer to, and you felt like really foolish, right? You felt ashamed. You felt embarrassed. And so, you know, in your subconscious brain, you, you know, you keep shying away from that reading, like especially reading out loud or answering questions out loud. You kind of make yourself small so the teacher doesn't see you and you don't get called on. So that's being wired into your brain. Like it's OK. You don't like you don't like reading or you don't like to answer questions and you don't like putting yourself out there. So I'm going to hardwire that. So whenever that that opportunity comes up, we're going to play it safe. 
So don't worry about it. Don't touch that book. You don't need to carry that book around with you because that book brings you those feelings of not feeling good enough or equal to everybody else. So this hard wiring starts happening. And so whenever you have the option of going and playing that dopamine game, you know, the gaming or reading a book, what is the, your brain's going to say? Oh, let's go do let's go do the fun thing. Forget about that book. So you don't have the motivation to pick up that book to read. And this is what happens sometimes with our kids. It's the thought process that they have about something that is not pleasurable to them. Um, and and even if our kids that are struggling had true struggles with um, reading and processing words and um, and then try and, and maybe they can read the words, but then they don't have they have no idea what they read. And so understanding what they read, all the different pillars and pieces of reading so for a lot of kids doesn't flow as easily and they don't catch on as easily or get it. Or what happens is our, our system of reading, of learning to read all the textbooks and all the programs out there are only uh, only. Um, coming at reading for like, like one or two dimensional, like maybe, you know, reading and or being read to so as auditory and um, reading is, it doesn't cover all the different modalities, all the different ways that our kids learn. And so if, if reading were to come at the way your, your brain is wired, like um, you're, you're, you know, like if you are more of a logistic, uh, logistical type of thinker, or if you are a verbal thinker, meaning that you love words, what if you are an auditory thinker? And so you, that whatever goes in auditorily, you hang on to it. Or if you're a visual thinker and it comes in, you know, and you have to see, actually see pictures in your brain of the information that's coming in auditorily so you can hold on to it. If you cannot do that, or if you're being asked to bypass that system, um, then it makes it more difficult for you to be able to understand what you're reading, for you to be able to look at a word and take the word apart and figure out uh, you know, how to logistically divide the word and put the word back together again. So there's lots of different um, things that are going on and then all kids learn differently. So it, re re it is difficult to create a curriculum that is going to hit everybody. So there's gonna be some that fall by the wayside because of the way the curriculum is being taught. There's gonna be kids that are gonna be falling off that are not gonna catch on or it's not being taught. It's not their fault. It's just the way the whole system is. And it just makes it really difficult. So what happens is the subconscious brain is hardwiring in I don't, I don't feel good. I don't feel safe reading. I don't feel safe or comfortable um, putting myself out there and answering questions because I don't want anyone else to make fun of me. Because you know how that is when you're in school. Um, as an adult, you don't really care so much. But when you're growing up, that's an impressionable stage of, 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 of uh, growing. And it really matters what your peers um think about you, right? And so that's where things can get really bogged down um, with the hard wire in the brain. And so the motivation to want to pick up a book and read, and if they have struggled in that um, arena, then they don't want to do that. They don't, do you want to do something that's hard? <laughs> you know, when you think about it, and it, it, it's because, because it can bring a shame. It can bring, um, that recognition that you're not good enough, you're not equal to everybody else. And so it's embarrassing, you know? So those thoughts kind of roll around when you're, you're tasked to do something that's difficult for you to do. And it's not, it's not you, it's actually the way something's being presented to you, right? Okay, so what, what about, think about you, um, a time when you were really excited to be doing something that seemed challenging, you know, like when you were running to drive a car. OK, your motivation was there. You wanted to drive that car, but you're like, I have to go through all these steps to learn how to drive a car. I didn't know it was so complicated. I thought you just got in and turned the key and you went right or pushed the button and you went. But there are so many steps to learning to drive the car. But you were motivated because the end result meant that you were going to get to drive the car. And so that that motivation took you through that challenge of learning all those steps, taking a driver's ed test so that or a driver's test so that you could get your license. Um, and having um, somebody, a, an officer sit next to you and, ha and you drive them around, you know, <sighs> that can be kind of harrowing, but 
you are motivated to do it because you know the end result is going to be a driver's license and you get to drive your car right okay and so I think like where, where I'm heading with what about you know learning how to how to ski how to snow ski you know that's would be really a lot of fun to do if you've never done it before there are steps that you have to learn in order to keep yourself safe um, when you are on those skis but you're motivated because you want your end result is to ski so with our kids when they are young right and for them to see the end result as reading is important they don't it's a mismatch they, they're, they're being told that it's important, but they don't actually see it in their life as it being important. Does that make sense? And so, you know, for our kids, they, we have to want we, to get them motivated to do things that they want to do to turn their brains on to learning is to get in front of them with some, some things that they like to do, like explore with them. What is the favorite thing they like to do in their free time? They like to draw. Do they like to create? Um, do they, you know, a, a structure out of Legos? Or do they like to create their own games, right? Their own gaming. That takes a lot of, uh, of work to do, a lot of thinking skills there. Do they like to write poetry? Do they like to write short stories? You know, and maybe they, they really love words and they can just write and write and write words, make something out of paper. They may, they may not know what that end result's going to be because all those are creative processes and they're excited to find out where this thing is going to end up and then they go look mommy look what I just made and you're thinking wow that's amazing that you just made that they were motivated to get to that in that in thing whatever it was um, because they loved doing the actual thing right the actual project so coming at our children from what they want to do what lights their brains up, what turns them on, how their brain works, and trying to find that piece of, you know, what really makes them like, you can ask them, what do you like to do? You know, I know what you don't like to do, we don't have to worry about that, but what do you want to do? What do you like to do? And notice, wow, they really not, they like to draw. Oh my goodness, they are really good at whatever, you know, at picking out close that coordinate, you know, just whatever it is that they do right, and they do not right, but they do because um, they're motivated to do to, to move through a challenge. Um, you know, try to take note of what those things are. And then in our um, Next, uh, in our academy, our Rethink Learning Academy in March, we're going to start taking a look at some of these ideas of what motivates our kids. So have a list of things that you are finding that your kids are motivated to do. And then we'll take a look at that and see what it is that, what is, how is their brain learning? How is their brain actually learning? Because then that gives you clues as to how to present other material that they need to learn, but present it to them with their lights on, they're motivated and they're excited. So we are gonna be learning more about that in March in the Rethink Learning Academy. And for now, you can grab the link below to the uh, Discover Your Superpower quiz link. And I will see you all on Thursday. Bye.